As the foundation is a structural engineering software for the design of concrete footings, it includes the design of a spread footings based on the latest ACI provisions. But how do you actually enter the information in the software? How do you check the results? How do you optimize the design? This is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to review the graphical user interface in the spread footing design module in ASDIP Foundation. Let's get started. This is a template for the spread footing design in ASDIP Foundation. It has two panes. In the left pane, you enter the information. In the right pane, you check the results. In the geometry tab, you enter the dimensions and sizes of the footing and column. In the footing tab, you enter the footing dimensions, the footing thickness, the soil cover, and the water table depth. In the column tab, specify if it's either a concrete column or a steel column. In the case of a concrete column, the loads are applied directly on top of the footing. Uh, you specify the column dimensions and any offset with respect to the center line of the footing. In the case of a steel column, the column can be supported directly on the footing or can be supported on a concrete pedestal. In this case, you specify the pedestal height, then the pedestal dimensions, and any offset to the center line of the footing. And the loads will be applied to the top of the pedestal, and any eccentricity will be considered. If we go to the loads tab, at the top of the page, there are two options. The first option is to specify a single set of pre-combined loads, and the second is a nominal set of load cases, and let us combine them internally. The load cases are bed, life, roof life, snow, wind, and seismic. The available loads in this module are the vertical load P, moment about the two axes, and, and then horizontal shear forces about the two axes as well, as shown in this schematic image. We go to the materials tab. Here you enter the material properties for the footing, for the column, and for the underlying soil. You click on the soil tab. Here you enter the allowable gross soil bearing pressure, the friction coefficient to the bottom of the footing and the underlying soil, the internal friction coefficient, and the soil cover density. We go to the reinforcement tab. There are a number of uh, graphical controls to specify the rebars, rebar sizes and uh, number of rebars for the footing and for the column. In the right pane, if we go to the other glance tab, this is a summary of the results with the most important and relevant information in just one screen. Here we can see all the ratios for uh, the different uh, uh, topics, load transfer and uh, column design, the stability check, shear design, and reinforcement design. Here we can see immediately if any of the ratios is failing, so we can focus our attention to that deficiency. If we go to the condensed tab, this is a more detailed set of calculations grouped by topic, also by load combination, for instance, the cover turning calculations, one-way shear calculations, also showing the controlling load combination, sliding calculations, punching shear, uplift, and so on. We go to the detail tab. This is a much more detailed set of calculations, step by step, with exposed formulas and also with references to the ACI code. You can follow these calculations in a granular way. So one-way shear calculations, flexure calculations, the punching shear calculation, also showing the controlling load combination, load transfer calculations, and column calculations. We go to the graph tab. In the soil bearing tab, you can see graphically the soil bearing pressures with the values at the corner of the footings. This is the location exactly of the zero pressure line. In this case, it's a partial bearing footing. And this also can be sorted by load combination. In the one-way shear tab, this is the one-way shear analysis at a distance D from the column face in both directions. The program shows the results. In the punching tab, you see the punching shear calculations at a distance d over 2 from the column perimeter also can be sorted by load combination. The program shows the maximum stress. In the bending tab, you see the bending moment at the column face in both directions. These moments are used to design the rebars for flexure. In the column tab, you see the interaction diagram of the pedestal or the concrete column showing also 
the point representing the actual loads for comparison purposes. This is biaxial. In this case, for example, the rotation angle is 48 degrees. So this is interaction diagram at the most specific section. Finally, in the construction tab, the program generates an elevation and a plan view of the footing with the rebars. So you can check your final design. The program generates two types of reports, the condensed report with similar information to the condensed tab with all the text and image information from the design. And also the program generates the detailed report with information also similar to the detail tab with all the text and images as well. As you can see, it's very easy and efficient to design spread footings using this module in ASDIP Foundation. The program is able to model footings in partial bearing or biaxial bending and also considers the buoyancy due to the water table. With this, we conclude the presentation on the review of the graphical user interface in the spread footing design module in Aztec Foundation. If you are interested in the software, please download the free 15-day trial. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you for your attention.